Welcome back. People go to medicine cabinets to find relief. Medicines, on the other hand, go to medicine cabinets to die a slow and undignified death. There's the penicillin from 1997, the eye drops with the label worn off, the reddish goop that may once have been cough syrup, and amidst all these sputtering bottles and vials, nothing that you actually need right now. So it's time to give your medical supplies a checkup. Apart from your prescriptions, all you need are the basics to treat cuts and burns, fever, pain, skin irritation, and allergies. Now I've got Nola with me and I'm going to test her OTC knowledge over the counter which means you don't need a prescription for any of these and find out if she knows what to put in her medicine cabinet. Are you ready Nola? Yes. Good. Yes, Cuts have. and burns. How would you treat that? With what would you treat that? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> All right. Burns. Very important. Burn shield. Obviously a yeah. dead giveaway that. Vital to have in your medicine cabinet, something like that to put on burns. Remember, please don't put Vaseline or, or butter on a burn. Bit of lukewarm water, or rather just tap water over the burn and then some burn shield. Can't go wrong. Good idea. Yeah. Next up. Okay. Cream. Creams, um, yeah, I'd say that for a little bit later. That's probably okay. more for your itches. I would use something, you know, the usual sort of cuts and bruises. Yeah. There's plasters, there is uh, your gauzes, your swabs. Important to have all of that on hand anyway because you never know when some sort of cut happens and you need yeah. to close that cut up. I would use something like this. This is an antibiotic ointment okay. that you can put on the wound that just keeps the wound clean and free of infection. All right, generally, and that's oh, there's a little more burn stuff there. Okay, so oh. burns. What next? Let's talk about uh, pain. Uh -huh. pain. How would you treat pain? Pain pills. Pain pills. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good answer. Pain pills. Yes. There we are on the Dr. Marshall. Pain pills treat pain. Absolutely. Uh, the, the general mild painkiller is a good idea. In fact, I'm going to say this a little bit later because you can use this for fever as well. Okay. Something like brufen um, and aspirin are just general kind of mild painkillers. We okay. want to be careful of aspirin though. And Do you take aspirin? I do take them occasionally. Yeah. Are so, they good? Well, I tell you why you want to be careful about aspirin. Aspirin uh, potentially is damaging to your stomach. So if you have stomach issues, uh, an irritable stomach, you don't want to use aspirin. Also, it can interfere with blood clotting. So people who take blood thinners or are about to have surgery mustn't take aspirin. Children and teenagers should avoid aspirin as well because it's been linked to young people or in young people to Ray syndrome, a condition that involved, you know, involves the swelling of the brain and the liver. So aspirin in kids, mm. toss it out. All right, that's pain. What about okay. fever? You pick this up. Fever. Fever, okay. yeah. Paracetamol. Just okay. safe in kids, safe to treat fevers. You've got to have something like that and a good stock of that okay. on hand, always. In fact, I was going to call my daughter Paris Zeta. <laughs> uh, but then the whole name didn't really work because it's Parasitamol. Uh, and I just oh, thought it wouldn't okay. really <laughs> <laughs> We're heading into Quite winter, so, so colds and flus. Yes, don't take my word for that, Nola. <laughs> colds and flus. How would you treat colds and flus? Colds and flus. Obviously, uh, yes. yeah. Well, something like that. That's more allergies. Uh, so don't confuse colds with allergies. Okay. Um, important not to mix up the two. Okay. Do you know how to tell the difference? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> colds essentially, very, colds, very easy. Yeah. It's the duration. A yeah. cold's going to last 10 to 12 days. Allergies last as long as you're exposed to the allergen or the thing that's giving you the allergy. And obviously the onset of symptoms. Okay. An allergy happens immediately. A cat yeah. comes into the room and I, the I'll just start sneezing. You... Exactly. Yeah. Whereas a cold takes a bit of time. So okay. important to always have an, an antihistamine with you. Just ask your pharmacist for something that's non-sedating. Okay. So uh, that one is for allergies? This is for allergies. It's a syrup for kids. Uh, that's the tablet. Great for allergies. Oh. Non-sedating. No issues there. You don't want to drive with uh, a sedating, uh, sedating antihistamine. We were talking about colds and flus though. Okay. Uh, decongestants. Really good. Just You need something like that to keep your sinuses open. Uh, but avoid one particular product called pseudoephedrine. Okay. All right. Uh, pseudoephedrine concerning particularly in South Africa, the South African Heart Foundation claims that 70% of the South African population suffers from cardiovascular problems ranging from high blood pressure to heart defects. And of that 70%, more than half don't even know they have a heart condition. And what pseudoephedrine does is it pushes up your blood pressure. Uh, so you need to be careful of that. So if you're going to get a decongestant, get something like this. Ask your pharmacist for a cardio-safe decongestant that doesn't have sugar and pseudoephedrine or something called phenylephrine. Okay. Right. We're not sure that's damaging to the heart, but we don't know. So decongestants, good to have. Just make sure they're safe. Okay. Would you take an immune booster? 
Yes. I would, absolutely. Yes. Something with a lot of vitamin C, something with a lot of zinc, yeah. and something with a lot of magnesium. Can't go wrong. Important to have in your medicine cabinet. There it is. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, these are great for decongestants. I forgot to mention that. Little patches. Anything that can, you can put on your kid's chest or that just literally has eucalyptus and camphor oils that gets released over a long period, nice eight hours while they're sleeping, okay. vital to do. So handy thing to have in your cabinet. Okay. All right. I'm right. getting a lot of, okay. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of information. Is, look, if you get all this right, which you have so far, you know, you get to keep the lot. What else? Skin. How would you treat skin irritations? Mm. Ah, the thing you picked up earlier, yeah. Basic little <laughs> steroid cream, good idea. It just stops the itch uh, for whatever little minor abrasions or, yeah. or irritation or rash that you get. The other thing that I'd have in your cabinet is definitely an antihistamine cream. Uh, keeping in mind that antihistamine works as soon as the reaction happens. So it'll stop the histamine reaction, but it won't prevent it. In other words, it won't... Uh, it, it, um, Oh, I'm going to follow my words here. Uh, the sooner you put it on, the better, in other words, is what I'm saying. Okay. So it won't cure the allergic reaction. It just stops it progressing. Slow it down. Mm. So antihistamine cream, very important. And a little steroid cream is great. Don't forget your tweezers, obviously. Everyone needs some tweezers. In fact, you probably need to just tweeze <laughs> <laughs> quickly. There you go. That's nice. I won't charge you but for that. But what is that one for now? Well, that's just for pulling out little, uh, uh, little, little splinters. Um, I wouldn't use this for taking out a bee sting. If your child has a bee sting, what you <laughs> want to do is just get it out as quickly as possible. Use a, use a fingernail, use yeah, anything, yeah. and get it out quickly. My daughter had a bee sting just the other day, in fact. Um, very important to have as well is something like this, a good antacid. All right. Always need some sort of antacid in, the, in your medicine cabinet. Yeah. If you're pregnant, make sure it's an antacid that's safe in pregnancy. Okay. You're not pregnant, are you? No, 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 okay. no. Because there's a lovely glow about you. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, last two things, what is that? To measure the temperature. Temperature, fevers obviously. Yeah. Uh, we don't like to use the mercury based ones, we'd rather use digital ones. Very important to use digital, just are safer the, and are better. They're more accurate. They're more accurate too, okay. and the ones that you can put into your ear as well, even more so. Oh, and okay. finally, some rescue remedy for a little bit of shock, something happens, great to have on hand. Just a nice little natural product that okay. works very, very well. All right. Wow. Okay. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Nolo, you know, for playing along and for helping me sort of decide what needs to go into the cabinet, you can take all of that home with you and Ooh, look after you and your daughter. All right. Thank you very Let's give Nolo a round of applause. Well done. That's super. <laughs> One last thing, Nolo. You should have them on your phone, but in a panic, you might not be in a state of mind to search in your phone for those emergency contact numbers. So it's a good idea, and I'd suggest that you get a list up and put it on the inside of your cabinet. And we have a list for you on our website, or just SMS the keyword emergency to 33728, and we'll send them to you immediately. Norlo, thank you so much for playing along. Pleasure, Appreciate hey. that. Enjoy Let's get round of applause. I want to live the best life.